with long shafts through the air. This should be a smooth, continuous movement, influenced by the hand and finger grip, and divided into four departments. One, the preliminary run for forward momentum. Two, the concluding stride, acting as a bridge between the run and the throwing stance. Three, the throwing stance. And four, the throw and the reverse. Javelin throwers with strong hands usually prefer the thumb and forefinger grip. Others will give preference to the middle finger. During the concluding ride, heel and ball of the foot roll should be used. It serves as an automatic brake on the preliminary momentum, producing elastic automatic strides and a smoother rhythm. This champion, who has thrown over 248 feet, uses a double left foot spring to get into his throwing stance. Facing forward encourages upper body snap and makes unnecessary the exaggerated cross step. Starting the throw with a sustained lifting pull, his arm is a full extension of the body catapult. When the side throw stance is used, opposition force and hip action substitute for the catapult-like body recoil. A distance-producing trajectory often depends upon the cooperation of the seemingly unimportant last two fingers. The javelin thrower has a wide range of choice in hand grip. Here he demonstrates his personal hand grip. No matter what grip is used, the javelin must lie snugly in the valley between the thumb and forefinger, as shown. This placement should be maintained throughout the throwing action. The position of the fingers and the responsibilities given to them will always be a matter of debate. Physical strength, size of fingers, and the style used must play important parts in the ultimate selection. As in a handshake, all the fingers should participate. Extending the index finger is recommended. Some prefer this grip. Shifting the little finger under the shaft is another of several variations. Whatever the grip, each finger must contribute power or control to the throw. There are also many ways of carrying the javelin. The personal style shown here is recommended. It allows the athlete to run freely. Here are some other variations. Ease of running and ability to get the javelin into position must be considered. A proper throwing position requires a backward arm action timed with the concluding stride. This technique produces more tension than the side swing or the downward drop. The arm correctly takes the throwing position before the final stance is reached. Now, tension pays off with a whip-like movement that is packed with power. An upright posture should be maintained during and after the throw. This is important. Opposition between stomach and back is essential to this style. The exact length of the preliminary run is a matter of personal preference. Sufficient distance must be provided, however, to develop, through progressive action, a momentum that will permit a final build-up in speed during the last try. The second check mark indicates the beginning of the final flowing stride leading up to the throw. The exact angle of the throw will vary with wind conditions, but primarily depends upon stance and arm and hand action. Any attempt to gain artificial height may dissipate power. In the final stride, the thrower continues to face partially forward. This method does not require an exaggeration. Now we will observe the final approach. Reaching the final check mark, the thrower springs from the left foot to make his first stride. The second right foot spring requires no particular effort. Knee lift is pronounced. Left foot pressure is again applied vigorously to produce the throwing stance. This is important. 
that excellent leg spread and body position produced automatically is perfect for opposition balance. The automatic reverse is produced by preliminary momentum. Flexible knee action will lower the center of gravity, preserving balance. The javelin hand is in line with the shoulder prior to the throw. Now the hand has been pulled forward. It is above, but still in line with the shoulder. Turning the head to the left permits the extended arm to pass over the shoulder. Allow an ample safety zone to avoid fouling. Too small a margin produces an instinctive lessening of speed and throwing power. Landing shots often handicap those using the right foot hop. Here the hips are parallel to the runway. Records can be made from either this side style or the semi-forward facing position. Both are recommended. For most javelin throwers, a left foot start is recommended. This is one of several variations. Estimate the javelin's elevation. See whether it wavers. Does its speed build or die? The javelin angle varies with the style and the placement of the cord grip. This champion's grip and style permits the javelin to be held point high. Try lifting the tail of the javelin for a straight throw. Become accustomed to the throwing stance through the one-step or short approach. Bending both knees equally would encourage proper arm and leg opposition. The left arm should be shoulder high and fully tense. This arm follow-through takes strain off the easily injured elbow and distributes it throughout the body. Relaxing the arm for snaps is dangerous. The javelin will spend its force in climbing if you try for artificial elevation. Now follow the recommended method of getting the javelin into a position of arm extension prior to the throwing stance. The javelin is now properly fixed to start the sustained upward and forward pull. Straight line pulling lift is maintained until body weight shifts. Arm and hand tension and hip snap complete the throw, producing the reverse. Here the athlete puts his back muscles into full use while concentrating on a forearm snap. Upper body and leg coordination is developed by this drill. Notice the action of the right shoulder blade. Increase its flexibility through exercise. Its forward movement adds speed and force to the throw. Hold the throwing palm upward throughout and after the throw for tension with hand high for hip coordination. To control the javelin's climb so it will level off, try both a tense wrist snap finish and a heel of the palm lift. In conclusion, begin your final stride with a left foot spring. A right foot start is awkward. Get your javelin ready for the throw before you take your throwing stance. Use the first three strides to obtain full arm extension. The elbow bends only slightly. After the follow-through, watch the sphere. Experiment with cross turns. Throw with and against the wind. Check the javelin's landing angle. Try various grips. If yours is correct, the power will flow upward from the ball of the left foot to the heel of the throwing hand. Build a personal style based not on the mannerisms of others, but upon fundamentals of body mechanics. When you master them, you will get distance with the javelins.